Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling is in Zinviewable. I'm Inventor Dan Zinn, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at what's new in Zim 9.3.0. So let's pop into an example where we have the new uh, HTML tag. So Zim tag, that is HTML and HTML overlay. And we have um, a form put in here. So this is an HTML form with a drop down, etc., and a submit button that then uh, clicks on through. Oh, notice um, that was a mystery car. Let's go back there. If we enter a car, Honda. Honda like that. And we choose more than 10 years old, submit car Honda more than 10 years old. So we've, we've had some questions as to whether Zim can handle uh, data and things like that. Anything that is done in Zim from number steppers, color pickers, all that kind of stuff can also be sent through as data. I think we just did an explore on that. Yeah, we did. Uh, so check um, one of the recent explorers on, on data. Let's uh, dig in though and see what the Zim tag looks like. Huh? Close that down. So uh, Zim tag, we're using Zim 9.3.0 here. It's much like the text area and the loader. Both of those components will add an HTML overlay, in the one case a text area, and in the other case a, a loader. Uh, but there are times when we might want to overlay other things for other reasons, who knows? And so we made a generic tag one that will scale and move uh, with the frame. So, uh, so let's just open that up again. Doop. Uh, as, as we scale here, that moves, and when I close the pane, uh, that closes as well. That's not terribly easy to do, it's, it's okay, uh, but there's some things that we need to do in the background for that to happen, to make that HTML overlay. And there are some, some issues with it. First of all, the HTML will always be on top, so when you drag things, we can't drag canvas items over top of that HTML. So you have to use it uh, carefully, we'll call it. Uh, if we come in here, here's the new tag, and we're giving it a dimension. And what that does is it creates a div tag, a div tag. And then we can add anything we want to that div tag. So there we are adding some HTML, uh, an h1 to the Zim tag. Uh, we've got a span in there with an HTML overlay, and we'll show you how you can style up some of those things. So we position that on stage. This is the simple one that had the title there, the H1. I already have that open in a browser. So that's the H1 right there. Do a refresh on that. Uh, it's darker now because the pane, when the pane comes up, it creates a, a dark uh, shadow, but <laughs> it doesn't darken the HTML because that HTML is on top of everything. Um, we have done tag.style. Oh, this is now tag ID. Uh, I've left the other one around just in case, but anyway. Uh, tag style color uh, equals white. So there's a style property on the tag as well. Here we are grabbing the tag ID. That was briefly ID, but that conflicts with the create JS ID on a container, so it's called tag ID now. So ZSS stands for get the styles, get the CSS for this tag ID, and change the font family to Verdana. So that's an alternative. You can go tag.style.fontfamily equals Verdana or you can use what is already built into Zim, and that is the ZSS. Uh, here we are, ZSS on a subtitle. So because we put in a span with an ID of subtitle, we're using uh, ZSS for grabbing the subtitle and changing the font size of that to 20 pixels. Note that we're now in CSS world, so it's not 20, it's 20 pixels as a string. Sigh. And then in here, that's what's causing this to be 20 pixels, this part of that. We can also access the inner HTML of the tag, so tag.innerHTML, and that just flows through. Both these, the, both the style and the inner HTML flow through to the actual HTML tags 
uh, style and the HTML tags <laughs> in your HTML. As a matter of fact, the tag has a tag property that will give you that HTML. So we could do that. And so rather, so the tag property is referring to the HTML tag used by the Zim tag. And we don't want to um, uh, really repeat that. So tag dot tag dot inner HTML sounds silly. So we've added the inner HTML property to the um, the Zim tag. And there we are adding ya. So ya is being added to the HTML tag. And that's this first ya right here gets added. And then we have another example of using zid. So here's a zid, Z, zid or zim id. We're, we're accessing the subtitle and we're changing, that's the subtitle tag uh, by id. And we're accessing, or we're changing the inner HTML of that. Uh, oh, no, here was a tag. We missed that one. So tag.add, ya. Yeah. That um, is another way that we can add more to the inner HTML rather than using the HTML's inner HTML, we can just use the add again. So it's trying to show you that add, much like this, appends. So it, it will keep on appending to that as opposed to the inner HTML, which if we didn't put that, if we deleted that, we would end up with inner HTML of ya, um, but we are actually appending there too with the plus equals. This is yet another way of accessing the inner HTML is to access the tag with the built-in for Zim anyway, the built-in zid. Uh, very much like the jQuery's, similar to the jQuery's dollar sign underscore, or dollar sign round brackets. I'm going to show you a little bit more about that in just a second though. So here we have another example of adding an HTML form to the Zim pane. So here we have a pane. We've given it a dimension, a background color, and we're showing it. Uh, padding. Um, the HTML div has a padding outside its dimensions, so I don't know why when you add padding the dimensions of, of the div now are the dimensions plus the padding rather than putting the padding inside the dimensions. Like, ah! Anyway, um, so I'm storing a padding variable in there because we're going to need it a couple times. So now here we are making the form. This is a new tag. So that will end up being a div tag that is placed um, wherever we, we've centered it on the pane, in this case. And we've given it a dimension of 500 by uh, 175. And when we center that, it thinks that the tag has that dimensions. Well, it doesn't. It's got a dimensions of that plus the padding that we've, we've added. Well, I'll show you. Uh, we've added a style for the padding right here. That's a border radius right here is the style for the padding. We'll get to that in a second. So we've uh, moved that back minus the padding to properly center that. Not really much we can do there. Uh, I don't think it's a big deal particularly. And then we're adding, and we're using the back tick here the, so we can use the sort of JavaScript new templating system. Uh, that is just a little bit easier than putting quotes around that and dealing with pluses for multi-line and various things like that. So uh, that might not work on old iPads or something like that. So just be careful there. Uh, it's it's uh, JavaScript 6, ArachnaScript 6, ES6, whatever. And so here we have styles. So this is all the stuff that's being added to that div. We're, we're, we're adding a style right to the div. Uh, we don't have to imagine all this stuff that's here is just being put right inside of a div tag. So whatever you can do in HTML in a div tag, you can do here. So if you want, you could put style directly in there. Uh, or this could have been in some remote CSS page, or it could have been up top in your HTML document. That would have worked fine as well. So we're adding, we're targeting a number sign zim because we passed in the ID there on the tag. So that's a way that you know what that div will, it will have an ID of zim. And therefore, when we set the styles, uh, we can use the number sign to access the outer div. So this is the div that the tag makes. And we're saying give it a border, a border radius, a text align, and here's the padding. Uh, that's how with ECMAScript uh, 6 you in, insert a variable right into this um, back text. And that's what gives us this outer border here and the white div 
that is centered now. If we if we don't move it over the padding, here's what that would look like. We'll save that. So here's what that centered tag would look like. And like I said, it's not really our fault. The tag is this big, centered in the middle. If you were to outline it, uh, I'm not sure if the outline will show because the HTML, this is HTML, is going to go over top of a Zim outline. Anyway, you can see that that's not centered until we you know, subtract the padding from it. So subtract the padding from it, and then that gets centered. Um, we are then ent ending our style and creating a form that goes to a results page. The form has an input and a select pull down menu and a submit button in the form and that all gets added to the HTML tag that's called form which is centered on the pane. Now we've also set some styling in different ways. We don't have to. We could have taken all the rest of this styling and put it right in here just fine or right you know in the next line here. But I wanted to show you that we don't have to inline the style like that or put the style inside there. We could go form.style and uh, that would allow us to change any style one at a time though. So form.style.background color is white. That's where that comes from. Uh, we could use Z as well. So Z is very much like the dollar sign, uh, the dollar sign in jQuery where it's using a uh, <laughs> or it's using the selector. So now if we wanted to, this, this, all the style that we did here, number signs him, take that stuff, uh, we'll cut it. So we have no style up there. We could have done a Z here, Z, and in round brackets said uh, number sign Zim, and then um, dot CSS. So apply the following CSS. Oops, oops, oops. Now, in this case, uh, it's border. It's it's either quote. Well, this stuff needs to go in quotes because uh, we're now back in JavaScript, and it's a comma here. So in JavaScript, uh, we're doing our styles <clears throat> with object literals. So border, and then that becomes a string with a comma. Border dash radius could be border dash radius if we string that, but traditionally in JavaScript we use camel case, and then this also needs to be a quote, and a comma, and comma. Text dash align is with the capital A, comma, right, the padding, and is this a problem? Uh, the, oh, we just use padding now, so padding is padding plus quote pixels. Nice, huh? And let's try this up. So we've gotten rid of the style there. We'll change something a little bit. We'll make it a 40 pixel border radius. And we refresh here. And it's broken. What did we miss? Unexpected token somewhere on 83. Uh, oh, equals. So it's equal to that object. <clears throat> I suppose. That's it. Oh, that's all uh, not an equals at all. It is a method. Okay, there we go. All right, that looks better. So we get any, any selector in there. So this is any uh, CSS selector dot CSS. And then in the round brackets, we apply our object. And we refresh here. And we're missing a bracket now somewhere on 87. Oh, no semicolon. Sorry. <laughs> there. Woohoo. And what have we got? Something else broken. Oh, a bunch of ugly broken stuff that's not moving anywhere. Uh, F12. What said? Center is not defined. What center? Oh. There we go. <laughs> So obviously there's uh, no real reason to do that. And uh, there we are. So is that a larger border radius? Let's just check on that. We'll set that back to 20 and watch carefully. Refresh there, it's smaller border radius now. So 
what we're doing with Zet, by the way, and Zet's been around for a while in Zim now. It's part of the HTML functionality of Zim. Uh, what we're doing with Zet is we're applying CSS using JavaScript-based CSS, uh, which would be, in other words, the results of saying um, some tag or document dot get element by ID uh, dot style dot border equals, and you've got to put quotes in there. Uh, document deck element ID some tag, uh, in this case uh, zim, um, dot border radius, or dot style dot border radius is equal to 20 pixels, and that's how you would do it. Okay, so you can stay within JavaScript. You don't have to drop into um, HTML uh, CSS version of CSS, but uh, you can stay within the JavaScript and apply it with Z. So I'm going to undo that. <laughs> All those little fiddly changes. <laughs> Do I even want to? I think it's trying to undo. I'm hitting the control Z, so uh, my atom is frozen. Oh, it's, well, it adjusts the connection here, I guess. Come on, baby, you can do it. There she goes. And we'll put this back up into almost there. There we go. So now that's back up into the, um, uh, the add of the tag. We did set, uh, in terms of selectors, this means any ID tag called Zim, which only one of them, I suppose, uh, the input fields within those. And then, or the select, so, or and, or whatever you want to call it, and the select fields within that. Uh, we'll have these styles. So that's what is, that's what's styling the select right here. And the input with a, um, is it all inputs? Yeah, all inputs. Then we even specialize a little bit more. We say, hey, any input with a type of submit will get these styles. So all of this stuff is CSS selector stuff. And you can see that that works inside of inside of Zet to target uh, various sub-targets uh, with the selector. Cool, huh? Uh, Zet can do more things as well. Uh, you can put events on there. So any selector, you can put events like a click event. Uh, so now we're using uh, Zim events or CreateJS based events on that. Uh, and we can set any property as well. So you can set any property or a whole bunch of properties um, with the object literal onto HTML tags. And so this is very much like the dollar sign underscore or dollar sign thing. And uh, I keep on saying dollar sign underscore. Why do you use that a lot? Anyway, whatever. Uh, and that's Z. So Zim's version of that. Now, when we submit this, boop, boop, doop, doop, doop. And that wasn't really bubbling. That's been around for a while. All this new, uh, but now that we're introducing HTML overlaid onto Zim, it may be that you want to uh, make sure that, you, and I, or we want you to make sure that you know that you can operate on that with uh, using some of the Zim HTML functionality. Uh, we are submitting this form. So where are we submitting the form? There's the form action results. So going to a results page. Here is the results page. And the results page is also Zim. And what we're doing is we're getting the query string, which is a Zim uh, function, get query string, which turns the query string, whatever's coming in on the query string, into an object that we can then use that because um, I don't know if you noticed on the query string we're using get when we submit. You don't have to. You could use post just fine. But we used get here uh, because we're not posting to a uh, PHP page or some sort of server page. Uh, you would normally do that, post to some sort of Node.js server or PHP uh, page, that kind of thing. Uh, but we're posting back to an HTML page and you can see that the data that we're that we've selected we're collecting here uh, on the command line or in the query line. If we put in some data, enter a car, a Ford, Ooh. 
there we go, Ford. And so now car equals Ford comes in there. And you can grab that in HTML by using the location.search, but it grabs all that stuff, including the question mark, which isn't terribly handy. So what get query string does is it puts that into an object. And we've stored that object in data. So now our label is going to say have a text of car colon. Yeah. Then we are um, deciding, is there a car? So this is a, uh, we're inserting here uh, a ternary operator where we're saying, if there's data car, that means something was put in car, then use whatever was put in car. Otherwise, put the word mystery. And then we're also uh, adding to that string, concatenating on the data.h. Normally it just looks nice and simple like that, data.car, data.h, great. Uh, in this case, it was a bit more complicated looking because we wanted to find out if they had submitted a car or not. That's what's going in our label. We're center regging it, we're animating it, and we're wiggling its rotation. So all that stuff um, does the following. Whoop, this stuff. So if there were no car, no car, would be equal zero, then it puts in the word mystery. If we put in uh, DeLorean, how do you spell Lorian? Is that right? Um, it might be a plus in there, enter, then it says a DeLorean. And normally these things have pluses, like less than, no plus, to, that's proper CGI format there. So there we go. Neat, huh? And uh, we're going back through the other ones. That is uh, the new Zim tag. Um, Woohoo! Where you can put anything in the div that you want. And this has been a What's Bubbling at Zim. We'll show you a few more things that's new in 9.3 in, uh, in the next bubbling. Woohoo! Uh, if you're digging Zim, come on in and join us at zimjs.com slash slack and uh, say hello. Of course, look at the Zim site, zimjs.com in general, all sorts of examples and learn sections and code and fun stuff. Ciao.